Board games, 4K. Hello, we're back. This is part, God, part seven, and I've lost count now. Part seven of a complete run through of our entire board game collection that we've been amassing since before you were born. Well, about 1982, but um, yeah. So we've we've done we've done all these shelves here. We've done this shelf here. We've done this over here, and so we're gonna crack on and we're gonna do this shelf beyond me. So. I don't know how long this is going to take. These, these, these range between 10 and 20 minutes. So just remember, if you get bored, just go and watch another video about, I don't know, something else. So let's hop to it, shall we? So up here, we've got Divinity Derby. Oh, ouch. Divinity Derby. This is a, a racing game and a betting game that plays up to seven players. And what you'll be doing, you'll be, you'll be selecting a card from one of two card trays that are either side of you so the player adjacent to you has also got a choice of a card from that one so you'll be playing at a card moving the uh, mythical beast forward and you'll also be playing these sort of deity cards that sort of mess things up and you'll be betting on who's going to come first second third and all that sort of stuff and it's uh it's actually quite good it's got some really good miniatures in it it's uh i don't know it just seemed to sort of fly under the radar again so to speak but um yeah it's not a bad racing game so here we go spinderella this won the Kenner kinderspiel de jar in uh oh, what was it 2015 this is a like sort of 3d kids puzzly sort of game with so look it looks a bit like this so you've got like a 3d sort of thing you've got this magnets with these spiders on it and one's dangling and You've got to sort of manoeuvre your bugs around without getting sort of caught by old Spinderella there. So, yeah, it's a wonderful kids game. Really good, well-deserved winner of this build. Ken Kinder Spiel de Jar. And, um, yeah, there you go. So, yeah, it's Villa Paletti. So it's a stacking game that won the Spiel de Jar in 2002. A lot of people say that it didn't deserve to win it, but we really like it. There's only one problem with this one, and that is that the cardboard, uh, what do you call it, um, cardboard levels sort of tend to bend so that means you could pull out some of these you could pull some of these pillars out without them touching so it's a bit of a and it only plays out of four players as well which is a shame because this will work better as say like an eight player game or six player game but yeah it's still wonderful fun and uh, via paletti it's one of our favorite stacking dexterity games so uh fog of love we hate this game it's absolute shit we detest this game it's not even a game it's just card matching and it may as well just be a pack of cards there's no game here i would say it's our work, the worst game we've ever played but i don't even think it's a game but we've kept it because it was a gift from my wife so we sort of dig it out and i reluctantly reluctantly play this with her but uh, it's just it's a load of shit but there you go you know never mind uh star wars x-wing this is uh well one of many ships that we got this is a miniatures game that you can you play it on a three by three mat or bigger mat if you like and it's got all manner of these ships it's recently got a second edition that we didn't bother with because we felt like fantasy flight were just conning us out of more money if i can get it back in there they're just conning us out of more money so we told them to go do one and um we're satisfied with just this these core sets so you've got a few tie fighters in there got a y wing b wing and all that sort of stuff and uh if these ever come up cheap we'll pick up some more ships because we really like the game the game is good it's just fantasy flights marketing strategy is disgusting but never mind so sea fail this is rob davio's classic turd in a box it's an awful awful game uh it's boring it's uh it's an experiment that went really really badly wrong and it's uh you can pick this up for 10 quid now my kids crying for some reason you could pick this up for 10 quid it's absolute dog shit and uh it's a stain on our shelf but we keep it there as a reminder of how bad things actually became a couple of years ago so dr paddock this is a multiplayer dexterity type of uh, sort of game you'll race into uh, do these sort of mini games faster than the other teams and it's actually really really good fun uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's actually really good fun. It's got some good artwork. It's got even got an app that you can use for this one. And uh, yeah, we recommend Doctor Panic as a one of those weird party games for multi, multiple players. So, we've got Kakalak and Poker. This is a very very small card game, uh, bluffing game. We've done a playthrough of this one 
have we done a playthrough? No, we've done a review of this one. So go and check that out. It's really good. It's uh, probably the best bang you can get for your buck for about a fiver. So yeah, there you go. Skull and Roses, one of our favourite games of all time. Another bluffing game in a box. Uh, you can play this with beer mats. We've done a, have we done a review of this? I think we have. So go and watch that if you want to know more about this wonderful, wonderful, tiny little game. Uh, yeah, whatever. So uh, Fantasy Realms uh, fell flat for us. We didn't really like it. It felt like it was a bit of shit. But uh, you might like it, but a lot of people do like it, but we don't like it because it's poo. Anyway, uh, we got uh, Mars Tabletop Open Golf. And um, yeah, this is a load of rubbish. We backed this on Kickstarter thinking it was an out of this world dexterity game, and it's not, it's an out of the toilet dexterity game. It professes to be able to be a game of skill by flicking this sort of paper dart thing across all these crappy, like, courses and it doesn't work you know like it gives you all these courses in the box right and there's no way you could set these up in the right way and it's just you, you need to have a table the right the same size as the, as the thing on here and we haven't got that so if you've got a really small table there's no way you can you can recreate these courses and there's no skill it's just like the the thing this thing takes on a mind of its own and it's awful but um we kept it because it's a kickstarter but we might get rid of it you know and they were promising that they were going to sort of bring out uh, expansions of this, and they never did. So there you go. Yeah, whatever. Uh, Marvel Legendary, this is another expansion. We've got some print and play stuff in here. Uh, we've all talked about Marvel Legendary. It's okay, we can handle it, but it's we find it a bit boring. But there you go. Dungeon Fighter. This is a marvellous... Oh, it's on a timer board there. What's that? Hang on, what's this? Oh, right. So, oh, yeah. Sorry, we didn't forget. We can talk about this. We've got... Uh, what's it? What's it called? Oh no, um, it's uh, BSG Express. We printed this off from a Russian website. I can't, I can't even undo it now. We forgot to add this, but it's the board for BSG Express Battlestar Galactic Express, which has now been reprinted as Dark Moon. We've had this for donkey's years. We've got a box down here somewhere. Where did I put it? Oh, there it is. BSG Express. We we printed it off ourselves. We've got all the stuff in here. We made it, and it's a wonderful, wonderful game. It's even better than Battlestar Galactica. But anyway, back to Dungeon Fighter. This is a marvellous, marvellous dexterity game. So what you're trying to do, you are trying to chuck dice onto this target and then make your way through the dungeon, uh, defeat monsters, get money, and get uh, get out uh, whilst fighting the end of level boss. It's bloody, bloody difficult. And some of the cards make you throw the dice sort of in weird ways, like under your legs or you have to hold somebody else's hand or you have to turn around and throw the dice. It's superb. We've got all the expansions in there. If you haven't heard of Dungeon Fighter and you like dexterity games, then we urge you to seriously consider picking this one up. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a asymmetrical party game for up to 10 players. So one group of people is the ladies, one of the gentlemen, the gentlemen are going out to work to earn money so the ladies can uh, buy dresses for the evening soiree and it's uh, it's quite good. Uh, a lot of people say it's got elements of sexism in there. I'm not going to get into that. You decide for yourself, play it for yourself and make your own mind up. So uh, yeah, we've got Gloomhaven here. We've had this for ages and guess what? We've never played it because it's a legacy style game. Nobody wants to play it. I don't want to start a campaign on my own. I ain't got time to do it. It's sat there, it's gathering dust. I'm not gonna say it's a good or bad game because we haven't played it. All we've done is punch it out. I might, might have played the first first scenario, you know, the Barrow one or whatever it is. And it, that, I don't know, it just didn't seem, the hype just, it didn't seem to have the same, like the, the hype was too much, but like, we're saving this for our retirement. We'll probably get into this, but by the time we actually start getting through this, something else amazing or allegedly amazing will probably be out and about. So Gloomhaven, yeah, we don't know. So uh, all the Zombicide season one stuff, all the, the first iteration, we've got season one, two, three, all the small box expansions in there. None of the Kickstarter stuff. So uh, love Zombicide, but we've got all the missions for this in that book up there. It's infinitely replayable, what's this? Oh, it's a load of fighting fantasy stuff in there. Um, oh, get in there. So, um, yeah. Infinitely replayable is on the side. So many options, so many maps, so many characters, so many different ways to play. It's absolutely superb. And we haven't really, we haven't bothered with the Black Plague or Green Horde or 
um, invader because you only need one song per side and this is the this is our favorite setting so uh yeah there you go we've got a uh, flick them up down here this is a dexterity game wild west dexterity game it's like a flicking game so uh we've got the red rock tomahawk and the stallion thing in there just about managed to cram it all in and uh yeah so this is a pretty good dexterity game i wouldn't say it was one of the best dexterity games available but it certainly is fantastic so uh yeah we've got neck really this is sort of like a time traveling oh, I can't get out. time traveling sort of uh worker placement game set in uh in a time where a meteor is due to attack earth and uh i'm gonna have to change the battery so uh, i'll be back after i've changed the battery in the camera whoopsie daisy well, where were we? We were talking about an acronym, weren't we? So, uh, what did we say about this one? Yes, yeah, so it's a sort of time travelling game with uh, where the world's going to get, it's inevitable, it's going to get destroyed by a meteor, and uh, you'll be sending your workers forward back in time, sort of taking loans in a sense, and uh, paying back these loans in the future to take actions in the present. And uh, we've got the the wonderful mech, mech sort of uh, miniatures thing in there. It's a wonderful, wonderful game. So, so it looks co quite complex, but it actually isn't that compl complex once you get sorted in your head with it. And uh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, we love it. So we got uh, Sushi Go, the, the normal version of this one. This is sort of like a, well, it's a pick and pass card game, like it says there, right? Yes, it's a, it's a it's sort of card draft in these sort of bits of sushi. And um, yeah, it's all right. It's not too bad. It's a bit simple and um, it's just a very, very light a card drafting game so we've got pingo pingo this is a game by roberto frago which is the same geezer who done um captain sonar so this is a weird one this one comes with a dark gun right and a cd so what you'll be doing you'll be take see, see the gun yeah uh where is it see the gun yeah so you, it comes with a dark gun and a cd and you'll be putting these targets around the room uh, drawing these cards and they'll tell you when to shoot the gun or go and do something and do different things and it's a very very quick silly dexterity game sort of not very well known it's based on another game i think i can't remember what it's called now but a game from the 90s i think and it's uh it's actually all right we quite enjoy this one my kids like it and it's uh it's quite good fun with the old dark gun yeah um yeah so oh. this game is next one's called strike this is a dice chucking uh strange sort of game where you'll be throwing dice into this uh this arena and uh you'll be you'll be throwing your dice into the arena and you'll be when it, you'll, you'll be taking out all dice that of, of one thing that match so uh and then you'll be the next person will chuck, chuck their stuff in and it's a sort of elimination thing so whoever's got their the, the, whoever is last with a diet in their pool wins the game so yeah it's really good we really enjoy a game of strike and that's superb so down here we've got project elite adrenaline expansion we'll talk about that in a minute we've got the talisman dungeon second edition expansions in there i think we've got timescape in there we'll talk about that in a minute we've got agricola down there wonderful worker placement game by uve rosenberg uh, so it's stood on board, top of board game geek for quite a while this one and uh yeah it's, it's absolutely fantastic everybody knows what agricola is right so we've got uh, uve rosenberg so half this is probably best with three or four players so it's quite simple what you're doing is you're waiting for these uh, boats to come into Le Havre and you'll be taking resources to buy buildings and get points and it's super simple it's super immersive and it's a wonderful game so Caverna we've not played this one we don't know anything about it it's just get down there so we uh, haven't played it we think it's a, f uh, a sequel to that one but uh, we can't really speak much about it because we just haven't got it to the table in all the years that we've had it, which is a bit sad, isn't it, really? So we've got Attica. This is a sort of a weird sort of civilization sort of building, tile laying game sort of thing. It's actually really good. We quite enjoy Attica. It's, uh, I don't know, not many people have heard of it. It's, uh, it's an old sort of game, but it's actually quite enjoyable. So uh, if you can find it, it's worth a punt, worth a little quick punt. Right, stand up. So up here we've got sticky chameleons this is a game a dexterity game where you've got these sort of sticky tongues you'll be chucking onto the table like elasticated sticky tongues to grab uh, different types of insects off the table and everyone's doing it at the same time it's a it's a sort of 
Organised Chaos is actually quite a good little kids game and uh, Sticky Comedians if you can find it is uh, quite good. Teeth Tashin, this is a backstabbing bluffing game for quite a few number of players. Uh, can't remember how to play it, we played it years ago and it's for, it plays up to eight players. It's, uh, I think it's quite good, can't really remember. So we've got a zoo ball up here and this is a dexterity game where you'll be flicking these discs with animal stickers on, trying to score goals. And uh, yeah, it's actually quite good. Uh, it's just very basic, just a sort of a, a felt mat and some discs, uh, but we quite enjoy it. My kids like it. So we've got uh, Genties. This is a Kickstarter. This is the deluxe version. It's a quite a good worker placement game. Oh, well, it's quite a good civilization building game. We really quite enjoy this one, but um, there's a few there's a few problems with the Kickstarter on this one, and we won't be back in any more Tasty Minstrel games because of it, you bleeding rogues. So, Sentinels and Multiverse, good grief, we've had this for years, we've never played it. Oh my God, I'm embarrassed. But um, yeah, I can't talk about it, we don't know what, what it's like, so we just picked it up and it sat there because, I don't know, I don't know why. Snow Coil, this is a one of those sort of weird party games that is uh, so, you're trying to sell this useless rubbish to the other players and it's one of them sort of cards against humanity who does the best thing and somebody chooses what their favorite uh sort of sales pitch is it's not too bad but you need the right group of people to play it again it's the same sort of thing as all these other sort of fun employed type games so we've got monzo this is a wonderful haber racing game where you'll be chucking all these sort of multicolored dice and you'll be moving your racing car around a track dependent on what you roll on the dice and it's a wonderful kids game a very 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 basic racing game and we love monza so we've got craft wagon we haven't played we haven't played this one we picked it up for the price of a mars bar a few years ago and we've never played it and uh we can't talk about it so we've got uh fearsome flaws print and play this is a game by friedman freeze it's you'll be moving these people around this sort of maze trying to stop the Frankenstein's monster from eating you. So yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, Panic on Wall Street. This is a multiplayer shouty shouty game where you've got investors on one side, bankers on the other. And the bankers are trying to sell the investors stock for the biggest price possible and the investors are trying to buy it for the cheapest price possible. It's a fantastic party game. We love it. It's currently out of print, which is an absolute travesty. But Panic on Wall Street, is one of the best party games that you can lay your hands on. I'm telling you now, it is absolutely amazing. So over here, we've got Zombie Cinema. This is sort of like a storytelling game of the living dead. Uh, yes, it's a weird, it's a weird one. This is sort of, we, we heard about this and it, we picked it up and we didn't realize it would come in a video cassette case, but it's uh, it looks really cheap. I think it's sort of an independent game. So you uh, you set up this scenarios and you're trying to survive a zombie apocalypse by telling a story through card-based uh, actions. So yeah, it's uh, surprisingly very good for an independent game and we're glad we picked up Zombie Cinema. So here we've got uh, the absolutely fantastic Trajan. This is Stefan Feld's second best game aside from Castles of Burgundy. It's just, uh, we love Trajan, it's, uh, it's a bit abstract in its implementation, you know, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a mind-bending. Uh, sort of worker placement sort of uh, it's got the mancala thing in there but it's a mind-bending game so many options absolutely amazing love it so here we've got let's put them down there. Wish we put that down. Oh, here we've got shipyard by vladimir sushi another one of our favorite games this is just basically loads and loads of rondelles you'll be taking actions on the rondelle to get crew for your ship you'll be putting funnels and sails on your ship and then you'll be set, setting them out on a canal based system to show them off and hopefully win the blue ribbon. And uh, this is absolutely fantastic Euro. It's a little bit hard to learn, it's, the rule book's a bit poo, but once you get it, get around that, it's absolutely wonderful. So uh, Vlad Shvartal's Space Alert, this is a 10 minute uh, real time game. So you'll be taking these actions based on, my kids are shutting their heads off. You'll be taking these actions based on this uh, CD soundtrack, or MP3 soundtrack that will throw threats at you you'll be react reacting to the threats putting these cards down and then you'll be once the 10 minutes is up you'll be going back and then resolving 
the calamity that you put out in front of you so yeah it's a uh, it's absolute chaos it's uh, it's a blast space of that it's absolutely awesome dice town another bruno kafala masterpiece this sees you throwing dice trying to get best poker hand to get the most money and uh to shut my kids up and um <laughs> yeah so yeah that's a wonderful game just the fact that you've got these uh these cups like these these cups in the shapes of bullets and everyone rolls at the same time you get this big massive bang as everyone slams their cups down excellent so uh survive escape from atlantis this is uh, we've done a playthrough of this one and a review of this one so go and check that out this is actually quite good it's uh it's been around forever and it will be around forever um you're trying to get off the island try to get your your men to the island without them getting eaten or sinking hello seven wonders this is uh anton bowser's finest hour this is a uh, civilization card drafting game absolutely fantastic we got all the expansions in here apart from what's it the armada one the latest one so yeah it's brilliant there's so much to do so much to see so many things to do with this one it's uh it's one of the best games ever made we love it seven wonders excellent so uh raise your goblets this is a sort of a weird sort of backstabbing game where you've got these sort of these you've got these plastic goblets and you're trying to poison other people's glasses without them whilst trying to figure out whether they're trying to poison you and everyone takes a, a, a sort of a special role with a special ability and you're going around trying to use these beads put them in the, in the glasses eventually you'll have to drink and um yeah so it says flawless etiquette for two to twelve mischievous players and uh yeah it's pretty good we quite enjoy that one on occasion so down here we got Takedo another Antoine Bowser classic this is a very very simple game where you are going from is it uh, Tokyo to Edo maybe not maybe I got that wrong but you'll be going along the sort of a, a, a trading road and you'll be taking stopping off at locations dra drafting cards from these decks trying to get as many points as you can it looks absolutely stunning kind of got a bit of criticism for being sort of not having that much replayability but it's we really enjoy it we've got a couple of expansions in there and it's uh it's an absolute classic game it's uh we love it so treasure island this is a sort of um a mediocre game from that go we found this a bit bland a bit boring and a bit weird so you, you basically one of you plays long john silver you've hidden your treasure somewhere you're trying to stop the the other players from find out where your treasure is and they're trying to find it you draw on the map you're using compasses and stuff to move around it's a deduction game of sorts and we don't really get along with deduction games very well so yeah we play it but we're not that enamored with this one mangrovia we don't know what this is we haven't played it it's a worker placement game we picked it up really cheap years ago and it's sat on a shelf so we don't know this is friedman freezes fauna this is a sort of a general knowledge game based on animals in the world and uh you'll be sort of placing sort of betting on the closest answer so you don't it's one of them games where you don't need to know the real answer and it's surprisingly good it does feel a little bit empty though for some reason it's a uh, i don't know it just feels like a half-baked experience but there is another one i can't remember what it's called it deals with cities and stuff and uh, the human geography all that sort of stuff so yeah it's not too bad uh eric lang's blood rage one of our favorite area control games and uh, this saved eric lang from extinction in our eyes he was he was releasing a lot of a lot of rubbish and then he came along with blood rage which borrows quite a bit of mechanisms from other games and we we really love the theme we love the miniatures we love the card drafting we love the hidden victory points in this we love the air control it's just out and out an absolutely stellar experience we've got all the expansions in here and um we love it uh golem arcana uh it's a shame it's one of them games that's sadly been lost it was an app based game so you get these big miniatures and uh, you, you're moving around this board using an app to calculate all the combat and stuff instead of rolling dice but uh, they harebrained schemes found it too much they closed down the app and it's dead well it's not dead because you can still get the android apk files from various websites so um you can pick this up dirt cheap it's not dead if you've got an android device you can still play this game it's worth picking up the base game for five quid or ten quid or however much it is and um, seeing how you get on with it it's worth it but uh yeah it's a real shame because it is actually quite good but uh yeah uh, another one that saved eric lang's skin for us was arcadia quest 
and uh, this is a sort of chibi thing, backstabbing sort of uh, dungeon crawling combat game, dice chucking fest, and it's absolutely charming. It's pretty good. We really do like it. It's one of the best sort of of its ilk, you know. And um, yeah, Arcadia Quest is really really good. We've done a play through this one. Go and have a look. So down here we've got Project Elite. This is one of our favourite games of all time. We've just done a playthrough. We've done loads of playthroughs of this. We can't stop playing it. It's a real-time action sort of game. And uh, you'll be... Uh, you put a timer on and you'll be trying to repel hordes and hordes and hordes of aliens. Uh, uh, trying to infiltrate your facility. And you'll be blasting them away with weapons by rolling dice, moving. Trying to accomplish objectives. And it's absolutely fantastic. The miniature quality is absolute dog shit. But the gameplay quality is stellar so here we've got the warlock of fire top mountain a games workshop board game uh very dated it's just a roll and move combat game with a sort of a hidden uh key type mechanism like a cluedo sort of thing so you make the different key numbers are hidden in the warlock's chest and you've got to find the keys and deduce which keys are in the warlock's chest so it's very dated but we love fighting fantasy so we kept it we had this since about 1986 and you can tell because it's all battered up so curse of the mummy's tomb another game that we bought back in the 80s when games workshop was well, we thought games workshop was the sole destroyer of board games and this is a 3d sort of thing it's yeah it's not that great there's a, there's a gimmick it's a cardboard pyramid and it's it's a bit rubbish but um yeah talisman second edition this is a uh, we I, I enjoy it i really enjoy it it gets slagged off now because it's just a roll and move random draw from the adventure deck but we play it for what it is we take a trip down memory lane now and again and we love a bit of talisman dungeon quest this is a ruthless uh, dungeon exploration game where you can die in the first turn so uh you'll be placing these random tiles on the board there may be traps and maybe monsters to fight and maybe treasure to be had and uh, you'll just place these tiles and uh, work your way through the dungeon and wait to get killed by a horrible horrible death and uh, yeah so railway rivals this is a train game that uses oh, it uses crayons we can't remember how to play it we've had it since the 80s and um, I think this one does this win some kind of award did it win the spiel de char I can't remember but it won something and we haven't played it for for donkey's years and it's just sat on our shelf gathering dust like a rusting old steam locomotive battle cars a game by ian livingston we love battle cars we thought this was very very simple when we were kids and we pulled it out the other day just to have a look and the rules it made me feel like i was having a migraine but um how did we play this when i was a kid because it just it's just way too complicated for us now i don't know we just think or what but battle cars this is a a very is it a more simplified version of Car Wars? I don't know. But it's uh, you, you load your cars up with all these different weapons. You go out in the arena and you just blow each other to smithereens. And it's absolutely, it's a blast. We've had this since 1983, 1983, 1982, 1983. It's the original printing. You can tell because it's got the original Games Workshop logo on it before they went all commercialised, right? But um, yeah, it's superb. Battle Cars is one of the best sort of uh, Mad Maxi. Uh, uh, blow them up games that you'll ever like to play so if you can find it pick it up so uh, so yeah, there you go so where we are that is part seven we're going to come back and do part eight we've got a, how many more shells we've got left i don't know uh, but i hope you're enjoying this um I'm gonna, if you're not i'm going to sue you for my bad back because i've uh, pulled a muscle in my back doing this so just for you see how lucky you are see the sacrifices that we make for you but we'll be back in part part eight part eight and uh we'll see you once i've had my back operation see you later